I'm going to go ahead with the meeting beginning ritual. 起立，面向佛堂，参加三鞠躬、一鞠躬、再鞠躬、三鞠躬，参加各位点传师一鞠躬，开班一鞠躬，请坐下。Please be seated. Is it our conscious? Is it sentient? Is it the intelligent? Well, that's a, that's an intriguing question. So uh, remember, we're talking about last time we were talking about how the Tao is not a deity. So it doesn't have feelings. It doesn't have emotions. You know. So this is a deeper examination of that. You know, fine. No emotions. No preferences. No desires. Okay. Okay. I understand. But I mean, today we also have examples. You know, like in science fiction, we have examples of like you know robots or androids or machines that are intelligent without without emotions, without having feelings, without having preferences or desires. So, can the Tao be that way as well? You know, conscious, in a sense, sentient and intelligent. Could it be? Well. So remember, what is the Tao? The Tao is nature. The Tao is that which is natural. So, the question of whether the Tao is conscious or sentient or intelligence, you can also ask it in a different way: Is nature conscious? Is it sentient? Is it intelligence? Remember, we oftentimes will personify nature as Mother Nature, like. We commit so many offenses in damaging the environment that Mother Nature, well, at some point, indicates her displeasure by inflicting upon us some sort of powerful manifestation, like hurricanes. You know, we think we think in those terms. So, so here's the bottom line about nature: the more we study nature. The more we are stunned by the beauty and creativity we discover, everywhere in nature, whether it's the intricate interplay of ecology and environment, or at the microscopic level, how cells work, we discover these mechanisms that are just mind-boggling. That you know they don't seem like they could just come out of nowhere or by random chance. And that is the reason why some people, even now, are firmly in the camp of intelligent design instead of evolution. However, I don't want you to assume that I'm endorsing, in any sense, intelligent design. I'll talk about why in just a moment. But first, the point that I want to make is that the more you know about nature, the more amazed you become. Like there's got to be something there, you know? How can how can all this all this beauty? How can how can these amazing things that we see、uh, just come out of nowhere? There's got to be some sort of driving mind or consciousness or sentience or intelligence behind it all, right? Well, let me get to my next bullet. So I can certainly agree. And you,、uh, you will probably want to mark this as my opinion. I can certainly agree that there seems to be some kind of universal intelligence in the Tao. If we equate the Tao with nature, with evolution, for instance, evolution has given rise to all kinds of incredible, amazing, beautiful,、uh, unlikely life forms. However, whatever intelligence that is that we discover in nature. It doesn't seem any anything near, anything close, anything resembling the human intelligence that we possess. So, let me get one more, and then I'll talk about this. This is a question that touches on intelligent design and other other controversial topics. So, the debate surrounding intelligent design has been going on for quite a few years now. It's a, a religious position, basically saying that, well, listen, if you walk around out there 
in the woods and you come upon a piece of rock. For all you know, that rock could have always been there. It's something that was formed by nature and it uh, was untouched by human hands. So you know that there was no intelligence uh, behind it, behind uh, just a rock or a pebble. But suppose you're walking around and you discover a watch. So you pick up the watch, it's, it's uh, symmetrical, it's, uh, it's something that was put together with a great deal of craftsmanship, with uh, a lot of deliberate elements associated with it, and perhaps you have never seen a watch before in your life, but even, even in that situation, you can sense that there is a reason, that there is a purpose for this round object that you have picked up. You know, you may not know uh, what it means to keep track of time, but you can see that this intricate thing was uh, something that was created by intelligent hands. So that is the argument behind intelligent design that when we look at you know, nature itself, when we look at the, for instance, the microscopic level, and we look at the working of the cell, we see such intricacy that it could not have happened by accident. So that's the pro-intelligent design argument. It argues for an intelligent designer, which is just a different name for God in the Judeo-Christian tradition. Now, the, the other side of the debate is scientists remain, the, the vast majority of scientists remain utterly unconvinced by the arguments from intelligent design and have pointed out how some of the most amazing features in biological entities could have evolved. So the eyes are oftentimes used as, a, as an example both on both sides. On the intelligent design side, you know, the proponents will say that, well, look at the eye, look, look how intricate that is. I mean, it took human beings, you know, centuries, uh, millennia, uh, millions of years before coming up with something like the camera, but this is something that nature had already created. Uh, you cannot possibly believe that something as, as amazing as the, as the human eye could have come by accident or by random chance. On the other side of the, the aisle, the scientists who do not subscribe to intelligent design will explain that the eye did not come about as a complete design. That initially it was nothing more than a cell that was sensitive to light. That became more and more complex complex over millions of years until eventually it became the eye that we know today. Every step is gradual. Now this goes on and on and on but I, I can tell you that intelligent design, the, 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 the expression, is not a, not a really good description of the intelligence that we actually observe in nature or in evolution. Why? Because while there are many amazing examples of creative design, many intricacies that we still don't understand, what we do understand is that many of the designs that we witness, that we uh, bear witness to, are not great designs. So how can I say that? Isn't this a little bit blasphemous? Well, no, it's not. From a human intelligence perspective, I can look at I can look at things, and even if I haven't got it completely figured out, I can, I can still see where things can use improvements. For example, human beings have the same passage for both air and food. This makes it possible for a human being to choke to death from food, from food blocking the airway. So, Question, what physical law is there that would prevent the design of a biological entity 
with a separate passageway for food for digestion and another one dedicated to, to air. Right off the bat, that will be a superior design. And it doesn't take me any more than a minute to figure it out. There are many other aspects to biological entities, human beings included, that leave much to be desired. So human beings, the human body, is by no means as efficient as it could be. Not even close. We're not very fast. We can hold our breath for any significant period of time. We're not really good at different things. You know, many different animals are far superior than we are, and even they are not optimized. So the designer is not really a smart designer. So what if, you know, not mincing words here, not being politically correct, what if we try to make it more accurate and say, well, it's not really an intelligent designer. Frankly, it's an incompetent designer. You still get to keep your ID, but now, suddenly, you don't want to give credit to God for the design. If God comes up with stupid designs. So anyhow, like I said, whatever intelligence that we bear witness to in nature, in evolution, it's nothing like human intelligence. There are certain things that, are, that it does that are far beyond our understanding. The origin of life, we don't understand it. And then there are certain things that it does that we already know we can be much better at. So whatever intelligence there is in nature, thus the Tao, not human. It's a vast universal kind of intelligence if it's an intelligence at all, it's a non-human intelligence. Let's go ahead and do the meeting ending ritual, everybody. Well done, everybody. Thank you so much.